Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, assessment with rubrics. Hi, my name is Guy Training and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about assessment with rubrics. But before I do that, I want to ask you, if you're a viewer and you like the videos you make, please like us on YouTube or if you're watching us through uh, iTunes U, please do that as well because that's the way other people can find the videos and use them as well. Uh, today we're talking about assessment with rubrics. Rubrics are a very powerful tool to assess a whole variety of outcomes in education and that includes work at any level from preschool all the way to higher education. Lots of technology tools help you really create fantastic rubrics. Some of them are tailored to use existing standards, some of them just uh, help you create something that you can use uh, any day. And what I want to start with today is the assessment from uh, Scholastic. And Scholastic has a rubric maker that is extremely simple and can be used online. Now this is not necessarily my favorite, but it is very easy to use. And all you do is you go to this page, you put the project name, you enter student names, and then you can give them score. And there's a raw rubric that has five layers, proficient, capable, satisfactory, emerging, and and beginning so you can do all of that you can add comments and that's all you need to do right there so it's a quick and dirty way to do rubrics now it's not my preferred one because it does not allow for a very robust rubric to exist with clear descriptors that will allow students to use that to create their final product but if you need something and you already have an existing rubric this is a really good way to create that final a expectation for a, that a student and it will add the scores up and do everything else so you can provide quick quick feedback and again it's a free tool available from Scholastic so that's the first one the next one I actually want to talk about website where you can find a lot of resources about rubrics beyond what I'm talking about today and this is edtechteacher.org and on this website there's a specific uh, area for assessment and there are lots of uh, tool options and you can see here lots of rubrics general uh, rubric makers and rubric generators I'm going to talk about a few that also show up here but uh, I do want to make sure that you understand that there are a lot more things here so if you're looking for something specific especially with educational technology in mind this is a great place to go to so again edtechteacher.org slash assessment uh, the next app that I want to talk about or website is ThemeSpark and ThemeSpark is a great little uh, tool that allows you to create rubrics and it goes back to standards so it really draws from standards from multiple places especially the common core but not exclusively but it also allows you to edit it so um, here's a way you can do that um, I'm creating a new rubric and you define the subject I'm teaching 21st century skills and then it asks me for a grade and I'm teaching fourth grade I'm not really but I'm going to do that and then you select what format of 21st century uh, skills let's say creativity and now there's one standard for creativity and now it tells you what under is under that standard and more general standard and you can uh, say let's take these two out and we've got generate and express new and creative ideas and take chances and fail and now you have this rubric and again the thing that I like about this the most is it does create it so you don't have to necessarily but if you want to make something a lot more specific for a project all you have to do is click on the edit button and then you can add descriptors and then you can print them out or you can save them online so you have multiple ways to share that with your students as a PDF or as a printed document or if you want just to send them online and this really allows you to create appropriate rubrics that rely on standards especially if you're using Common Core in other areas uh, they're all in there and that is really a powerful powerful tool that will allow you 
to, uh, to do this work very, very quickly. So you can create this even the evening before. It's not highly recommended, but I know we all get a little bit cramped for time. So this is a way to do that. And, and it's fairly easy to, if you want to reverse their grading scales or choose different standards, easily manipu uh, manipulated and then easily uh, worked. So this is, again, ThemeSpark, great free tool. I highly advise it. Uh, the next one that I want to, you, to tell you about is from SA Tagger. SA Tagger is a website that actually requires registration, but this specific tool, the Common Core Rubric Creation Tool, is actually free and it does not require any login or anything else. And uh, you can share the rubric with everyone on the web, you can print it out, or you can save it as a PDF. Uh, so, uh, all you do is you go to satagger.com slash common core and you select your grade level. Let's select a totally different grade level, let's say seventh. And then it creates, it asks you what area do you want to do it? And I'm interested in history and social studies. What kind uh, here, a craft and structure. And I want text decoding and structural analysis. And I'm continuing. And now you get, you see, it walks you through those steps with little bubbles, making sure that you know how to work that. And then uh, it tells you what they are. And now you can see how you can add or subtract or just say continue. And it'll actually generate your uh, rubric. So you can add a tile. This is uh, my history rubric uh, created by Guy. It wasn't really created by me. And I can add my email address. And then I press on Create Rubric. And again, because I didn't register, it does need to know where to send it to. And the rubric has been saved. And again, it walks you through everything. And you can see that now, uh, we can add or rearrange elements. So I can start adding right, descriptors into the different rubrics. And you can see that there's, this is a five-point rubric below, beginning, emerging, and proficient, and uh, the strongest. And you can, again, print it, download it as an, a CSV, which means it'll open in Excel or in Sheets. And there, that's where you can actually enter the grades. And you can add new elements and all of that. So uh, lots of options to use in Essay Tagger as well. And that's a fantastic way uh, to do this kind of work. And again, you can share it which gives you an actual link that you can send to somebody else. So if you've created it, you can share it with fellow teachers, colleagues in other schools, etc. And uh, it helps create that rich array of products created by educators all over. And then we don't have to duplicate efforts necessarily, although sometimes with a specific uh, project in mind, it's worth creating a very specific rubric as well. The last one that uh, I want to talk about is one that I actually I have known the longest. And this is called RubyStar. And RubyStar allows you again to create or to rely on already created rubrics. And in RubyStar, you can uh, look, for example, let's look at uh, the ability to look at um, art history. So we can click on that option. And what you'll get are existing rubrics with that in mind. This one does have some, uh, some ads, uh, which can get annoying rather quickly. But uh, if you ignore them, you're still getting a great tool. So you can see that the categories are there. And you can choose a category, a uh, recognition of work, for example. And then the text gets filled in. And again, you can go back in and edit any of these. So if you don't like them, you would like more details or project specific items within that. You can easily do that. And again, you can share that or print those rubrics. So you're getting a powerful tool that allows you to create something quickly, but then also 
uh, tailor it to your own specific needs. So today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked a lot about rubrics and the way we can use them and technology tools that help you create them. And I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.